Hi guys, I'm the floor at Frank's Oven. I've caught up with Michael, which I haven't seen for about five years. It's a real pleasure to see you again, Michael. Pleasure. And, and I know you're up to lots of things, but let's give us your full title. If I remember right, you're the, the president of the Austrian Amateur Radio Society, or has it moved on? It has actually moved on. Uh, I am now uh, pretty much involved in um, a new platform, which is called uh, Inter uh, it, it, it is called um, Institute of Citizen Science for Space and Wireless Communication (ICSSW), um, and we are here uh, together with IRU Region One uh, on the Open Innovation Zone uh, here in the boot uh, of IRU, uh, yeah. showing new technologies, new innovations in amateur radio and beyond. Yeah, that well. That sounds really interesting to me because getting new things out there, our hobby is has in many ways become a little bit stale. Yeah. Let's be honest. Yeah. Um, and it's not always about uh, it's not always about the contest contests and things like that. It's about education and what you're doing to me seems the right thing. It's uh, not just about education, it's also about fun and obviously uh, it's also about uh, learning something new um, and uh, that's uh, um, based on cu curiosity. Yeah? Yeah. So um, what we have done actually is uh, we have uh, sit together and um, created an idea and a project um, based on LoRa modulation. So Internet of Things uh, yeah. brought a new um, in uh, innovative um, uh, modulation schemes uh, onto uh, the world and uh, we uh, were actually looking what is the benefit of that uh, based on curiosity finding out uh, what is the best uh, thing uh, to operate on uh, UHF in this case uh, we were talking 70 centimeter yeah. and we have done uh, a small uh, project which is called Meshcom 4.0 and it's based on uh, little uh, ESP32 uh, uh, modules as you can uh, easily obtain in the internet yeah. um, so it's a small CPU with a small display and you also got a LoRa chip which uh, makes all the modulation and the HF part and uh, if in this case you also got one uh, with the GPS but there's a smaller one which uh, doesn't need a GPS because it will uh, interface via Bluetooth with your with your smartphone right. and on your smartphone you got an app and yeah. the app enables you to chat via amateur radio and I think that's uh, a lot of fun uh, and uh, it enables totally new um, areas of communication also for disaster and disaster relief operation. Yeah. So when you're losing your telecom provider, uh, the network of the telecom is not uh, online anymore, then you can go back, uh, fall back uh, with, with the amateur radio Meshcom 4.0. Which is what we always say, when all else fails, we have ham radio. That's certainly I, true I, and we hope we don't need it, but uh, it's good yeah. to be prepared. I yeah. think so, because yeah. occasionally things go wrong. Yeah, they, they do. Forbid, they do. But, but also think about uh, remote areas. Yeah. So I have been traveling a lot uh, also on Af in Africa and other parts of the world where there is no cell phone coverage. Yeah. Uh, so there it's also very, very interesting uh, to use this uh, new system. And you can even uh, use it via the satellite. So um, the Q100 enables you uh, to operate even with wideband modulation. Yeah. So this LoRa is about 150 to 200 uh, kilohertz wide which right. makes it so robust, yeah? Yeah. very, very robust. Uh, LoRa is uh, low power and yeah. uh, also yeah. um, uh, long range. And you yeah. can actually put that with an, with an up converter on the satellite and uh, operate uh, out there in the Sahara Desert or Namib Desert, wherever you go. Sounds uh, great. Yeah, and, and yeah. communicate chat with your smartphone. And the other thing is, let's face it, I know when I was growing up, possibly when you were, <laughs> space was something that we had great aspirations towards yeah. and as time's gone on i haven't lost the excitement for space and i don't think the youngsters coming into our hobby it's part of their life now and satellites and things like that so this what we're doing here is really generating i think interest for the youth rather than just saying 
we sit in the shack, we tap the Morse code out, or we stream into a microphone and talk to somebody on the other yep. side of the world. I think this is interesting. No, I, I fully agree with uh, what you're saying. So it's uh, a, a very interesting thing for youngsters, uh, for young students, especially as they go along with their technical studies yeah. uh, at uh, technical college or uh, technical university and uh, amateur radio. And uh, that's also the reason why we have created this Institute of Citizen Science for Space and Wireless Communication, which enables these students uh, to find their projects, to have a platform for their project, to interact internationally and uh, to, to actually get uh, satellites, their own satellites flying, some of yeah. the CubeSats, yeah. But uh, like we do uh, tomorrow, we, we will have uh, we will have uh, our meshcom system attached to a high altitude balloon. So Which also this balloon is, is an interesting stuff. So you don't need to go to space. Even yeah. going up 30 kilometers is a challenge uh, times yeah. two times. So uh, this is the kind of projects we are we are facing, and we try to promote. Um, and also to uh, discuss uh, about enlarging the definition of what is amateur radio service. Yeah. You know? um, so we tend to narrow it down, you mentioned it before, but uh, we, we'd like to open it up to a wider community, to the maker space, uh, yeah. to also um, citizen science in a way. So when, when you are tracking some animals or other things, there's a lot of HF uh, and, 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 and VHF uh, things, uh, uh, technology involved, yeah. Yeah? GPS is involved. So all the, the areas that we are experts in. Yeah. So we can contribute to this uh, citizen science part and actually uh, help them to make it more successful and have a wider a wider um, number of people to contribute to citizen science. Yeah. Well, you mentioned very quickly one word there, or oh, an acronym, APRS. Now, having worked in the professional side of uh, radio, not amateur radio, for the commercial yep. side, the number of de dealers or, or people that come into you to try and say, oh, we can track you in on, on site and all over your site. And I go, is that like APRS? They go, oh damn, you know about APRS. <laughs> <laughs> so it's just a rebrand. Yeah, one thing yeah. almost rebadged. Yeah. We, we amateurs have got some very good uh, te technology out there, and uh, sounds like what you're doing is making the best of it. Uh, you, you know, I I have a kind of um, example for this. I always say amateurs have built the Arkenoa. Uh, but the professionals have built a Titanic, yeah. yeah. So this is, uh, in a way, um, exaggerating, but uh, it's uh, telling the, the direction I'd like to go. So we amateurs, we have uh, created high tech in the past, and we have been ahead of the crowd yeah. or ahead of technology quite often, yeah. um, and uh, we tend to forget about it. But now it's important to stay ahead of the crowd and at the at the edge of technology, like. For example, here on the IARU uh, innovation, open innovation zone, we will have uh, uh, somebody talking about how to use artificial intelligence uh, within amateur radio. Yeah? Yeah. So we think that it is not, uh, um, not popular at the moment to use artificial intelligence in our hobby. But it could be very, very helpful to do so. Yeah. And uh, I mean, just consider uh, having a waterfall display where you not just have the peaks of the signals, but also have the call signs added there. Yeah. It's, it's not a big problem today yeah, with the, today's technology. Or if you are listening in on shortwave to a Russian station talking Russian, uh, there is there is no need, uh, no necessity that it, that it's coming out of the loudspeaker in Russian language. It could come out in in English. Yeah. Why not? Why so not? technology is there. Our yeah. smartphone can do it. So why don't we use it and uh, participate with this new, uh, new technology in, in amateur radio? Yeah. I think as I think this is very exciting times. Now, I'd love to talk to you, to, to you for for the hours. But I know you're a busy person. How can people find out about what you're doing? Is there a website? Yeah, there is a website actually that is called uh, www.icssw.org. So right. the Institute of Citizen Science for Space and Wireless Communication could be a good starting point. Uh, good. And, and there you will find many more projects, many more links, uh, many more software to, to check out 
and uh, to test yourself with uh, some of these new uh, modulation schemes, with new ideas, and also to contribute new ideas. I mean, we welcome people uh, that have some ideas, that like to have a platform to get their ideas uh, to a wider audience. Yeah. Well, that's, that's good news, and it, it is a two-way thing. We have to give you, as well as you're giving us, and people, everybody should get involved. And I think this is a very good project. So thank you very much for your time. And great talking to you as always, Michael. And let's hope we get to do this again fairly shortly. Thank yeah, you, Michael. Looking forward to that. Thank, thank you. you. Have a good thank show. Thank you for your time. Bye. Thank you.